plugin, check the description box below for tabs on my website, information about exactly what sound tools I'm using, and all the important links that keep me in business. The first thing to grab from Joey Santiago's playing is the idea that he never just plays to just play. You can tell he waits until he has a good idea of something to add to the arrangement. And that takes a lot of restraint, patience, and creativity. I've heard him say things to the effect of like, he would intentionally refuse to play chords along with Frank. And you can definitely hear that in all those classic Pixies songs that he's waiting until he has something to say, something that will add another level of interest to the song, something that is c contrasting or something that is adding depth. So cool. I've also heard in interviews, Joey talks about he has a sticker on a guitar case or something that reads something to the effect of, even when you're not playing, you're still being heard. Hmm. Hmm. And really what I take that to mean is the idea that if you hold back and you don't just play to play, it's the equivalent of shining a spotlight on everything else in the room and letting that stuff have its space and be heard. Side benefit, when you do drop in with your contribution, it's very clear what that is. It creates a much more powerful impact, a much more explosive kind of thing. And yeah, that was definitely that, that quiet, loud aesthetic that thing was going on at the time. We won't credit the Pixies with inventing that, but those classic Pixies songs definitely have that. The quiet verses, the explosive choruses, almost always. <laughs> Joey works with a small group of motifs I've heard him refer to as that guy. And what that means is like, if you limit yourself to like a handful of things that you know really well, but like can really adapt to different chord progressions and different grooves, you're gonna be a lot better off than if you're just thinking that every time you're coming up with a guitar part, you're cycling through all the possibilities in the universe. I can definitely hear that is in his playing and therefore must have influenced the way I think too. Cause I think we both do a similar thing where it's like, you listen to the, what you got in front of you, the version of the song, and you're not even thinking about music theory. You're just thinking about what does this need thematically? Loud, quiet, screechy, uh, swoopy, dreamy, stabby, those kind of things. And then you're looking at your little, your little bag of tricks and you're like, which one of these things will do the thing that I want it to do? One of the ones he talks about is the twinkly thing, which I think what he's referring to is triads, which again, to me are just pieces of cage shapes, but like, okay, the, the here comes your man thing, the... Definitely, that shows up in, in quite a few Pixie songs, and that's a good idea to store away. Be like, oh, I could do a twinkly thing to this song. What's the next one? Oh, yeah. The other one, he calls the Jimmy thing, because, yeah, uh, he does, like anybody, he loves Jimi Hendrix. But really, what he's talking about is his love of, like... He loves to mess around with unison bends. Yeah, that's from, uh, what, number 13, that. But I think one of the most famous uses of it is the chorus of Hey. Right, that's the chords. The G, E minor, B minor in a three bar loop, by the way, which that's a Pixies thing, is these, these structures that aren't symmetrical, aren't standard. And this is so counterintuitive. I would have never thought to do this. The chorus of that is just a unison bend on a D. You know, that's what, 15, 17. That's the chorus guitar part. That is such a strange thing to have chosen to do, but, like, it's brilliant. It's a really... 
a brilliant thing. It, it's, it's a surprise. It does like add a thing. And yeah, he does that a lot. Those kind of like, he calls that a Jimmy thing, but to me, it's like an air raid siren kind of thing. <laughs> definitely one of his things he also c talks about double stops and of course for me double stops mean but for him it's actually he's i think he's talking about dyads um and like his famous guitar part on where is my mind let's see if i'm in tune here nope you got it yeah you gotta loosen an e string there to get that third suite Again, this is all tabbed out, all these little examples, I'll put them on the tab. Then there's the West, the, the thing he calls the West thing. And yeah, you heard me play um, some of Wave of Mutilation. Yeah, you know, octaves show up throughout the 80s and 90s. <laughs> You know, a, a, a great motif. And it's funny because if that comes from West Montgomery, yeah, West was, you know, that stuff was like. You know, it's, it's coming from the jazz world, but then, you know, we took it and, you know, did, oh, I have to play this. This isn't Pixies, but. my favorite dumb octave riffs. Remember that band? Lit? Yeah, that's a great riff. And then, let's see, what's the other thing that he mentions? Oh, yeah, he talks about the trill, which is really tremolo picking, and that definitely, yeah, that shows up throughout his guitar parts, too, like um, in the chorus of number 13, that... <laughs> idea that whatever he is adding is singable, memorable, and catchy. And then that combined with the first thing I talked about that, hey, you don't even have to play if you don't have a good idea. That's been with me for forever. Ever since I heard Gouge Away, that I was like, oh, wow, look at that. Like, you just don't have to play. You don't have to. And that's a, that's a, sh a hard thing for a guitar player in a room to realize. Like, drummer tends to have to play to kind of keep things going. Bass player kind of has to. We don't have to. We can hold back and wait till we got something to say. So cool. So cool. He's one of the coolest, for sure. Thanks so much to everybody who supports me in all the ways that you do with the likes, the subscribing, and the sharing. That all helps immensely keep, you know, the eyes on my channel and, yo, the eyes on my website. On my website, this is how it all works. This is how I pay my bills. You can book one-on-one -on -one lessons with me to work on guitar or to have someone help you with your musical life goals. I also am consistently putting educational content on my Patreon page, and you can participate for as little as $2 a month over there. And then if you like comprehensive deep dive courses, I make stuff in partnership with the folks at truefire.com. It's all linked on my website. There you go. As Bill and Ted would say, be excellent to each other. That includes yourself. Happy Friday. Eat pizza. <laughs>